1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 134. Beautiful. Let's do this. <laughs> Get out of your hair. <laughs> Get out of my hair. <laughs> yeah, you're upset with me, aren't you? You take it on my head. Ah. Uh... I was holding it for you till you know silver went up to at least thirty dollars before I was going to sell them to you. Thirty dollars. I dropped a video today that said it's going to reach thirty dollars in thirty days. Really? Yep. That's my prediction after the election. Uh, we'll see if I'm right. Are you counting on Biden getting elected? Uh oh. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Really appreciate you checking this video out. So yeah, last week, right after the dip in precious metals, and right after I dropped my $30 silver in 30 days video, I decided to go in and see Tim. I cleaned him out of most of his Kennedys, for the time being at least. And I made a decent dent in his Benjis too. He has a nice stockpile of these. I did leave the walkers. They look nice. I just wanted to finish off this guardhouse box that I got from Talking Bullion quite a ways back. Uh, half of them I want in Benjis and the other half I want in Kennedys. So I also bought these uh, empty containers. So. I want to fill the containers, right? I want to fill the whole box, but um, I decided to get a bunch of junk. And I also picked up two insane toners. One I already sold in auction to someone in our community, but the other one is right here. And it is just <laughs> ridiculous. Look at that. It, it is purple, orange, Tim thinks it's uh, uh, done naturally because of the guy who uh, sold it to him and how he had it wrapped up in a cloth. But I, I'm just, and I don't like toners. <laughs> so I might actually, you know, see if somebody in our community wants this one as well. I don't know how we'll do it, but we'll basically uh, put that over here, seal it up in its coin capsule. Um, and you're seeing this video on Monday, the day before the election. And I... I just think Tim was maybe a bit taken back with why I was stacking so hard, why I was in there in the first place, just getting all this silver. So why don't I pop these in to my tubes here and uh, share with you my US election prediction and my rationale, okay? And I'm gonna ask you to do me a really big, oh, favor. Oh my goodness, look at all these Benjis. Uh, um, I'm going to ask you to please hit the like button on this video. Even if you don't like everything I say, I'm going to ask you to do that. All right. I, 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 I would really appreciate it. If you want to express your opinion, on what I say in here, please do it in the comments below. But and you can tell me anything you want. I appreciate it when people, you know, agree with me or disagree with me, but just, you know, do it in a respectful way. But please be kind to the thumb, all right? <laughs> just throw a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, okay, so this side is, what's this? Oops. Uh, I think these are the Benjis. Yep. $10 face in these. So I'll just start pulling those in. All right, so I recently did a poll on my YouTube channel, uh, it, ironically, on polls, where I asked if you believed the polling data this time around for the uh, US uh, presidential race. And I got over a thousand votes on it. The results were overwhelmingly no. People do not believe in the polling data. It was incredibly eye-opening to see that st strong opinion <laughs> about, actually, I think, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult to do this without counting, but I want to count everything. One, two, three, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, nailed it. All right. That's good. Ten. All right. So, you know, it was just incredible to see the results of that poll. Um, it, it was pretty eye opening. And I subscribe to quite a few YouTubers. Uh, many uh, are macroeconomic channels. I watch the videos, uh, and you know, I, I try to educate myself as best I can with what's going on uh, with precious metals and so forth. But there are two that I follow that are um, not afraid, if you will, to make their election uh, predictions known. They are really prominent hodlers of precious metals, experts in many different macroeconomic economic um, uh, studies and so forth. But is that right? Yeah, that's 10. <laughs> I hope I'm right because, you know, these Benjis have some more wear than the Kennedy. So, yeah, I'm going to guess the way it looks. Yeah, that's that's got to be 10. But anyways, the two people that I really enjoy watching, one is Peter Schiff and the other is Jim Rickards. Now, those two guys both predicted back in 2016 that Donald J. Trump would win the presidential election. They both believe that presidential polls are hugely biased. And, uh, and both have come out and said who they think is going to win. Again, you're seeing this on Monday, so <laughs> uh, tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, and about the polls for a minute, they, they are notorious for under-representing Republicans in their polls, um, uh, focusing more on what's called registered voters rather than those who are likely to vote. That's huge. Um, I, th I think a lot of polling companies are uh, you know, run by more left-leaning organizations or funded by left-leaning organizations. I think a lot of them have hidden agendas to push uh, left-leaning candidates and make them look better than they are. And almost all of them are calling for a Biden win, right? There is actually one uh, that is predicting Trump to win. They were uh, one of the few, I think, or maybe the only one, I think, that, that came out for uh, Trump in 2016. But they're saying it's going to happen again. Trump's going to win. But most of the polls are saying Biden by a, a significant margin, sometimes, you know, double digit leads and so forth. But those are the pollsters, right? Um, there is a struggle, in my opinion, between their natural bias and being correct. Between like, you know, influencing the election and having a good track record of, you know, credibility with elections. I mean, come on, they don't want to be wrong. <laughs> they, even though they are a lot of times, they, you know, they want to be right. They want to be taken seriously. They want to have people believe them mm. <laughs> the next time around. Even though they failed miserably in 2016 when Trump won, Peter Schiff believes this time Biden is going to win. He thinks that um, Trump is no longer an outsider. He's a known commodity. We, we, we didn't know what we were getting before, but we know now, right? So he thinks that uh, level of uh, surprise is gone. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Schiff is pretty, pretty hard on Trump when it comes to his economic track record. He thinks it's horrible. And in some ways, I agree. Um, some of the promises he had made economically, he didn't get, he, he, he is a candidate. He was, you know, harsh on the Fed and harsh on, uh, you know, the way our debt and so forth. But now, not so much <laughs> as, a, as president. He just embraces everything that's going on. And the, the other thing that, um, that Peter Schiff thinks is uh, uh, going against Trump is a, a desire for change that people are feeling. It's the, it's the same type of thing that got him into the White House in the first place. They want to change. They thought he was, you know, a non-politician. Bring him in, right? Um, I think Schiff likens him, uh, likens what's going to happen to back when Carter had his one term and 
they thought he was great. You know, it was a peanut farmer. They brought him in. All right, somebody on the outside. And it was awful. And they shipped him out for Reagan, right? So he thinks that's going to happen in reverse, okay? If, instead of a Democrat going out and Republican coming in, it's a Republican going to get the boot and the Democrats are going to get in. These are the, you know, perspective that he has uh, with this race. And this is why he thinks Trump is going to lose and Biden's going to get in. Now, Jim Rickards, he thinks Trump is going to win again and hold the White House. He bases it on, you know, the skewed, rigged polls that I talked about earlier. You know, uh, the, the uh, oversampling of Democrats, the insufficient sampling sizes. I mean, they really only do, a, you know, sometimes a few hundred people. And it's really, it's, it's not big enough for a, a legit sampling size. Um, they also focus a lot on the registered voters, not the ones likely to vote. Uh, he also thinks there's a groundswell of uncounted silent Trump voters still out there. He also, this, this is really interesting. He also says that there is a, uh, uh, a piece of data that people aren't looking at. And it's called the who do you think will win data. It's called expectation data not preference data. Preference data is who are you going to vote for? Everybody's pulling that, right? But the expectation data is who do you think is going to win? And that really taps into the connections that we have and our expectations of others. Maybe it's your friends or families, coworkers, uh, people you know online, whatever, right? He, Jim Rickards thinks we are mentally uh, scooping up data from a, a whole lot of different social data points, thousands of them, goes way beyond what the pollsters can gather. And normally when the, uh, who you're gonna vote for, your preference lines up with who you think is gonna win, your expectation, that person wins. You know, Ronald Reagan, you know, everybody, you know, not only voted for him, but they thought he was gonna win and boom, he won by a landslide. But when you vote for someone and you think that the other candidate is going to win or the other person running is going to win, right? Uh, it, it is amazing. Uh, the expectation is actually more pertinent. 78% more uh, uh, likely to predict who's going to win than your preference. That's only like two, 22% of what actually happens, right? So, and he, you know, Jim Rickard says the same polls that are showing that people uh, you know, what they're going to vote for, show that who they expect to win is Trump. That's Jim Rickards' take. Both of them think it's going to be tight. Oops. Man, I didn't feel this. Oh, bummer. All right, well, <laughs> maybe I miscounted somewhere, but I really wanted to finish the last two. I'll go back and definitely check out how much are each, each in, in every one of these? I didn't want to count them in front of you, but I'll go back. I want to get into the Kennedys now. But um, yeah, so ooh, nice. Now the Kennedys, these have less wear. Definitely. These are in good shape. It's one of the reasons why I like Kennedys. Yeah, you, know, you can look at a, a Kennedy and not know for sure if it's silver unless you look at the date, 1964. That's the only one that's 90% silver. Uh, Benjis, you look at those, you know they're 90% uh, silver. But I wanted to do the Kennedys as well. But anyways, um, so Jim Rickards and uh, Peter Schiff both believe it's going to be a, an amazingly tight race. Really close. It's not going to be a landslide either way. And both think that it's going to be contentious. <laughs> really contentious. The results are going to just drag on and on and on. We're not going to know come tomorrow night who won. That's <laughs> They both feel that way. Actually, I do too. I think this is going to go on for a long time. But um, they both actually also think that the underlying economic realities that we are living in right now are still going to be there no matter who wins, okay, Biden or Trump, it really boils down to the Fed that is driving uh, the fake economy, right? So nothing's really going to change monetarily. Nothing's really going to change fiscally. We're still going to print our dollar into oblivion. We're still going to spend more and more with an ever-increasing government. You know, both candidates love big government. The only difference, and you know, it's a it's a decent difference, really, is the pace in which things 
uh, might come, like you know, digital currency or uh, universal basic income (UBI) or modern monetary theory <laughs> (MMT), where it doesn't really matter what we print; it's all good. But you know, I think I think that's true. Uh, I think there's some differences in taxes and so forth and policy. You know, I, I'm not saying that there's no difference between them, but I think from a monetary and fiscal standpoint, we've passed uh, the point of no return. It is a done deal, in my opinion. There's no no way back from this. That's why I stack so much. There's a lot more at stake in this election. There is. There's and, um, you know, if you add up all Biden's programs, we're talking a $40 trillion current debt. And I don't see that's impossible how we can to sustain that. that. No, no. That's I mean, a... you know, mathematically, we can't possibly do that. Yeah. We're not bringing the tax revenue in, and then we're going to double the corporate tax rate and yep. uh, raise everybody's individual taxes to make up for your programs. But then we're going to print the money, Tim. You know that. Yeah, but there's an end game. There is an the end, end game. End game is the, the it's loss of the reserve currency oh. status. That's the end game. Just remember, Jerome Powell is still going to be the Fed chairman come tomorrow. <laughs> and we know what he wants to do. What What do I think? Well, this is where it gets a little um, <laughs> dicey. <laughs> Again, guys, please hit the like. Thumbs up, please. Because what I'm about to say now is going to, no doubt, tick some people off. I think the polling data as skewed and as biased as it is, is so significantly more uh, in, in uh, um, Biden's favor, he's gonna win. Am I excited about that? Heck no. Do I want Biden in the White House? No way do I want him in the White House. I actually think the, uh, the Senate is probably far more important to Republicans to keep than even the White House because that will be the final. That and the, and the Supreme Court will probably be the final shot that we have at keeping socialism from really, really digging its heels into our nation. So, no, I don't want him. But I do believe he's going to pull it out. Republicans have a more difficult path towards the 270 electoral votes. It is just harder. The Democrats have an easier path. There are more options for them. And I think some of the battle, you know, battleground states that narrowly went into Trump's favor isn't going to happen this time. I think it's going to be slightly in the Democrats' favor. I think the desire for change, I think this whole COVID thing has... And again... <laughs> You can go nuts in the comments if you want about COVID-19. That's fine. But regardless of where you think it came from, how it was, whether it was planned, you know, whether it's fake or whatever you want to say, I think it has an effect on the uh, populace. So I think I got this one right. Yes. I don't know what happened to the Benjis. Man, whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. I'm going to check out the counts on these, make sure I got it right. I may have just calculated wrong on my Benjis. I need to get, assuming that is supposed to be full, I need to get another, uh, uh, what, $40 face of Benjis and another $40 face of Kennedy's. I can, oh, that is heavy. Whoa, I can fill this guardhouse box from TV. Mm. That's awesome. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see what happens. God bless America. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.